on today's show. Are the Houston Rockets the best team in the league? And does Livingston deserve a one-game suspension? Up down on the Bucks trading for DeAndre Jordan, Derrick Rose returning to Cleveland, and hot dogs? We'll mop it up in a brand new edition of Weekend Whoopsies. It's Monday, December 4th. The starter starts now. Good evening, sweet world, and welcome to The Starters, presented by Jack Daniels, Tennessee Honey. Whether you're joining us live right now on NBA TV, catching us on YouTube, listening to the podcast, we're very, very happy to have you. I'm Jay Skeets, and alongside me, as always, that's Tass Mullis. Thank you for joining us. To his right, it's the international man of mystery, taking it to the max, Lee Ellis. Friend. Mm, Lily, and last, certainly not least, over yonder, that's the bearded one, that's Trey Kirby. hey yo. Hey, yo! TK, what's up? Well, I'm here at the internet looking for your best tweets at hashtag the starters. And guys, yesterday, the Warriors beat the Heat, and they did it despite finishing their shoot around in darkness as the lower bowl lights at American Airlines Arena just turned off <laughs> while the Warriors were finishing practice, making it look like they showed up early to a pickup run at a local high school before the lights warmed up. <laughs> and despite the fact that the Warriors did at one point make eight straight threes in the dark, it brings us to today's question. How would you make basketball harder? It could be something as simple as trying to play a game on grass. The uneven playing surface would be impossible to dribble on. Players would be slipping all over because you still got to wear basketball shoes. And worst of all, you would get grass stains on your leggings. No, thank you. But we want to hear from you. So let us know on Twitter. What other ways would you make basketball harder? Send us your best tweets to hashtag the starters. We'll hear from you a little bit later. All right, get those tweets in. Fun show tonight. We'll uh, discuss the latest DeAndre Jordan trade rumors. Uh, Derek Rose returning to Cleveland. We got a new batch of weekend whoopsies. But let's start with a little true or false as we look back at the NBA weekend. Trey, you got the questions? We got the answers over here. Three, two, one, blast off! The Rockets won again last night, giving them seven straight wins by 14 or more points and 13 victories in their last 14 games. They're undefeated with Chris Paul in the lineup, top five on both sides of the ball, and they've got the best record in the West. Guys, true or false, the Rockets are the league's best team. The blast off has been spectacular, <laughs> but it's false. I can't buy into it. I don't think the start could be any more perfect, but if you're going to say that the Rockets are the best team in the league, you're saying that up against the Warriors, seven-game series, you'd take the Rockets. I mean, that's how I'm classifying right. it. And, and the Warriors, despite being you know a little bit behind the Rockets in defense and in the standings, I think that just le leads you to believe that their laser-sharp focus isn't laser-sharp because they've gone to three straight finals, and the Rockets right. have not. And the Rockets are out there and gritty and grinding, and it's amazing to watch because the Rockets don't usually have those adjectives combined with their names. But it's fun to watch. That being said, so you're saying we're come, you're the saying come May, you even know, late now, May, even now, I, even I say, oh, interesting. Dro drop interesting. a seven-game series right now. Okay. I, I know I don't want to. I don't want to put it into June. <laughs> okay, because that's a long time from now, and you know we've this got, is we perfect for the Warriors. Though this is what they want. They want other teams taking the spotlight mm. off them because they are cruising along. The Warriors are playing really good basketball, but they're not getting the same attention as the Rockets. But I agree with Tass here because the Rockets. Look at the last ten or so games. These are the teams they've beaten: Lakers, Grizzlies twice, Nets, Suns, Pacers, and Knicks without yeah. Porzingis. There's a couple of other better teams in there, of course, and they were the last team to beat the Cavs who have won 11 straight. They're playing really well, but we've talked about this coming into the season and even in the early part of the season. The regular season actually doesn't mean anything right now for the Rockets. They have to yeah. do it in the playoffs. Since Chris Paul's come back, they look great, especially when Dan Tony can stagger that lineup and have one of them out there at the... They have been destroying teams, exactly. not only when Chris Paul and James Harden are playing together, but when one of them is on the bench. Yeah. Both units, either Harden with the bench or Chris Paul with the bench. John Schumann pointing out the, you know, the numbers going into detail. They've just been killing teams. And yeah. that's what you want. That's what we thought that's what they when we got those yeah. two guys together. You're like, wow, they're always going to have a Hall of Fame type point guard running the show. That should be scary. That should be dangerous. And, and it is. I get what you guys are saying, like a seven-game series with the Warriors. I think most people would still pick the dubs. But, but despite playing some subpar competition there, James Harden is playing the best basketball of his career mm -hmm. and statistically one of the best seasons we've ever seen from anyone. you got a deeper team. Now with Chris Paul back, they haven't lost with Chris Paul. Is the other thing you got to point out here. They're now eight and zero. You got Eric Gordon going back to the bench. You got Bob Mute, Tucker, Nene as your sort of defensive-minded guys coming off the bench. They got a lot of things going for them that are great, yeah. especially with you put you pair a decent above above average defense, top five as Trey said, with that offense. That's. 
That's that, something that, that is going to be scary. the key to the Rockets if they can maintain that defensive standard. Because in the past, that's what's let them down. They might score 120, but teams can actually outscore yeah. them as well. So, and I know Dan Tony's talked about that, and Trevor Reza, the more experienced guys, have said this is where we need to keep our focus. We can score any night, but they've got to be able to defend as well. I, I do agree with you though. It, with the Rockets and the Warriors, right? It's almost the regular season doesn't really mean yeah. anything. They're going to be all, they're going to be one of the better teams in the West. What happens when we get to the playoffs? The Warriors have proven they can win in the playoffs. The Rockets really, especially Chris Paul himself, hasn't as so much. That's true. But game one, when the Rockets did beat the Warriors, yep. it, was, it was a great sign for them because they beat them in a gritty, grindy yep. Yep. kind of way. All I can remember from that game was up at the three-point line, your Ba Mutes, your P.J. Tuckers, your Trevor Rees is getting out and grinding and grinding hard and being in the Warriors' face. That's how you beat the most talented offensive yep. team we may have ever seen. The Cavs proved that. In 16, you get up on that three-point line, and you don't let them buy you, and that's why they've got the makeup. They've got those hard-nosed dudes, just a bunch For of sure. them. All right, Trey, next one. Let's talk ejections because the Warriors, Sean Livingston got himself tossed from yesterday's heat game after accidentally headbutting referee Courtney Kirkland while arguing a non-call earlier today. We learned that both parties would be suspended for their part. Livingston got a game, Kirkland suspended for a week. True or false, Livingston deserves his suspension. True. Wow, it's true. really? Yeah. Really? He, because Tell me why. He, he instigated that. He instigated the incident there with Courtney Kirkland. Courtney Kirkland definitely okay. escalated it. But when you have a player butting heads with a referee... But, did he but, butt the, heads? but, but hold it down. The yeah, argument well, is look, that Courtney Kirkland, the referee who's now getting right, a week suspension... But then, but then Livingston he didn't He didn't fall back from that. Did he, you want him he, to flop and sell No, it? no but, but he then, once he gets a headbutt, uh, he, once he receives it from Kirkland, he stays there with it as well. Yeah. I believe... But I he honestly disengaged the forehead is what you're saying. Yeah, he didn't disengage, that's right. I actually believe the referee should have thrown Kirkland out of the game as well. Now, I know that that's wow. like a naked gun type of scenario. <laughs> a double cut. <laughs> but... No, 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 honestly, you're out of here. Like, like, the NBA got this right because Kirkland yes, was at did. fault and he deserves punishment yeah, yeah. as well. Yes. So, I, I'm just saying, like, if you look at the initial... Uh, the creation of that incident, Livingston went right at him, right at him, and, and, the, and the referee got caught up in the heat of the moment. So the right so you, decision was made. So you, you're fine with the one game yeah, for Livingston for sure. and uh, the one week for, for, That's for right. Kirkland? I think Livingston went up for a chat. I mean, he definitely went up to him and approached him, and, and you know he was hot at the moment. But if Kirkland doesn't put his forehead close to Livingston's, Livingston's forehead, then it's just a, it's yeah. a chat. Yeah, it's a tech. I agree. And, and that's it. You know, Courtney Kirkland really approached Sean Livingston. In this instance. Yeah, but look at how much Livingston kept going at him here, right getting into his face there. And Kirkland... It, yeah, they both do. I mean, look... That, that's both... what I mean. No one's right or wrong in this <laughs> instance. They're both, they both look bad. I mean, especially Sean Livingston. We never see him... That was his first career ejection. No, second. I think oh, he, he won in the, the playoffs. playoffs. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. I think Livingston got caught mid-nod. I mean, he, he was, was going <laughs> to nod it and he hit his forehead. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't think he really... You see guys go up and are so much hotter and so much more passionate up against an official and get... Zip zilch zero, maybe a tech. Yeah, I will say at least I, I, it, 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 it's another example because I think a ton of people forget this. They are human, these referees. Yeah. That was human emotion, not the right emotion, and he got dinged a week for it. It's going to cost him a pretty penny. Yeah. But they are human. I mean, he's he got fired up. It's and fun to go forehead to forehead. Right <laughs> yeah, There's you know, no like that's, that's, that's they're not true. robots. That's is all I'm fun. saying. And everyone, but do you oh, guys yeah. do you guys think that Livingston shouldn't have been suspended? Is that what you yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't think he should have been suspended. I think uh, I think. So a lot of people are rightfully arguing he shouldn't have been ejected. He got ejected mm. in the game. It didn't matter. But I, I was a little shocked that he did get a, a one-game suspension. I think the league maybe felt, well, we're giving the ref. We know the ref yeah. is at, at a fault here. But also, you can't go... Right in his You face. can't go touching the officials, whether or not even if the guy yeah. reaches out and touches you. Yeah. If Kirkland just stands like this, Sean Livingston does not get I agree. suspended. I agree. I agree. But we would also... We would be going crazy, I think, if... Kirkland didn't get a week for sure. suspension, and it was just Livingston that got a game. We would be going bonkers here today. I've never heard of him. We'd be going forehead to forehead. We'd I mean, be going it's, crazy. It's, right. it's a great move. Final one here, Trey. You guys can go forehead to forehead with me anytime you want to. <laughs> Anyways, according to LeBron James, his close friend and fellow PB&J ingredient, Dwayne Wade is, quote, probably the number one candidate in the league for sixth man of the year. And according to LeBron, he's, quote, not even being biased. Mm -hmm. <laughs> according to you guys, is it true or false that LeBron is right and Dwayne Wade is the sixth man leader? This is false. Why is that? Wade is the sixth man leader. 
No, he's not. Wade he's... came out today and said if anyone on this Cavs team should be the sixth man leader, it'd be Kyle Korver. Kyle Korver and yeah. Wade's absolutely right. He's being nice, just, just like LeBron, LeBron is being nice. Yeah, that's all LeBron's doing here. It doesn't yeah. mean he's right, though. The answer is false to this. There's know. many other guys I would have above Wade. I, I think if Dwayne Wade were to get it, he would get it in the Andre Iguodala type role. Like, really important for his team without huge scoring numbers. Yeah. Because he's okay. putting 12, 4, and 4 together. Ginobili-like, I guess, too, even a little bit back yeah, in the day. Yeah, but, but he's, doing, he's doing a steal and a block. I mean, his, his lowered minutes is giving him the energy he needs. He hasn't had a steal in a block since 2011, 2012. This is Dwayne Wade, flashback. Lower the minutes, score, do everything really, really efficiently and contribute defensively, which is huge. Look at the minutes here though. This is what's key to me because this is what I always talk yeah, about yeah, yeah. with a six man. He's playing, what's that, one second He's left. playing exactly <laughs> the same minutes, Exactly, really. and he's finishing. And look at just those other stats, the field goal percentage, the points, the usage rate, it all goes up because he doesn't need to be out there at the start. LeBron's got enough of the other guys out there. I'm not arguing that Wade is doing a phenomenal job coming off the bench, which we all said after those first three games he should be doing. I'm saying LeBron coming out and stomping yeah. for his guy to be the leader of six man. But I'm surprised. First off, he's not. looking way too far ahead. And he's just trying to build yeah. him up, I get that. But he's not. Like Will Barton, I think, would I yeah. would have him above him. Eric Gordon eventually going Gordon, back to the yeah. bench. He's going to be in the running. So I'm surprised, all. though, you're taking that sense because I know you prefer to get recognition for guys not just scoring. Yeah, you I'm know. just, I would I would vote for many other guys ahead of Wade right now. It helps that they're on an 11-game win streak, and that's what sure. LeBron's saying here, right? He's playing his part, and it's working. But Wade says Corver, who I think is right. He's, he was, been, awesome. he's been instrumental yeah. in some of those wins. All right, when we come back, we'll jump into the Uptown Report. Don't look. Welcome back to the Starters, right into the Up Down Report, where we figure out where we stand on some recent NBA developments. Our first one, Derek Rose has returned to Cleveland after being away from the team. The Cavs guard reported to the team's training facility and will resume the rehabilitation process on his left ankle injury. ESPN reported last month that Rose was uncertain if he would even return to the team or maybe even retire. Guys, are you up or down on Derek Rose's return here? Sure. No, not sure. <sighs> not feeling I'm a little unsure. I just think that it's going to be tough for Derrick Rose to fit in. The winning streak for the Cavs started, I don't think totally coincidentally, right when Rose went out. The things that have been going well for the Cavs are more three-pointers, more ball movement, more defense, more energy, which are things that Derrick Rose has definitely struggled with at some times in his career. That being said, he can have value, I think, but it would have to be as a third point guard, and that's quite the demotion to go from starting right at the beginning of the season to coming off the bench, not even as a second string guy, but he could give Dwayne Wade some rest. Mm -hmm. He can be playing some spot minutes when they need him. I think he can still be good for the Cavs, but I don't know if you want him back in a starting role. Well, they're not expecting him back to be playing for at least another two weeks, so they'll probably they'll probably lose by the time he gets back anyway. But uh, I just think whatever he's dealing with, I just hope that's all taken care of, really, because for, some, for a guy to basically walk away from the league to just sort himself out, I think it's important that he takes care of himself uh, mentally and, and physically and whatever he needs to do to make sure that he's... He can Especially cope. at his age. For sure. Yeah, it's great to see him want to come back, but I think he's playing for his NBA future right here. If, yeah. if he does not fit in with the Cavs, I think the next team or, or the Cavs potentially going to next year will look at him and say, year in and year out, I mean, two straight years he's left the team mm. yeah. to deal with stuff. Mm -hmm. Why are we going to take that upon ourselves? I, I literally think he's playing for his NBA career these next four months or so. All right, moving on. There is a, a slew of potential suitors for... Clip center DeAndre Jordan, at least reportedly. According to the Racine Journal Times, the Bucks, Raptors, Wizards, and Wolves have shown the most interest in DeAndre Jordan to date, with Milwaukee making a concerted push, is the quote, to try and nab Jordan. So let's focus in on the Bucks. Are you up or down on Milwaukee making a trade for a guy like DeAndre Jordan? Do it. Do it. Oh, why? Yeah. why? Well, th there's one key here with DeAndre Jordan. He can be a free agent next season. So it really comes down to what you have to give up to get him now. There's obviously John Henson is, is one of the key pieces. Jabari Parker, the Bucks couldn't agree an extension with him. So the, if the Clippers are say, listen, we want someone like Chris Middleton back, mm -hmm. then I don't think you do it. I, I think DeAndre's a good player. I think he needs a change of scenery. But right mm -hmm. now, the Bucks, things are okay. They're not ready to win a championship yet. I would sort of just push through with what they've got for now and, and, and reevaluate the situation as the season goes on. Don't underestimate the Bucks and their trading power because a month ago they traded for Eric Bledsoe, giving up a guy who that was already on the block in Greg Monroe, plus a first-round pick. So if they can do the same with John Hudson, who is on the block, mm -hmm. plus a pick or Mirza Toledovic, another guy who's on the block without having to give up that's a, a thing, a Middleton I think. Because or Brogdon. Yeah, that's a reports yeah. But are... go for it, but you don't want a guy exactly to, to take off in the mm -hmm. offseason. 
yeah, if, if you're you, having to give up a Brogdon or, or somebody that's part of your future. So you wouldn't do it because the reports are of your three guys, your Henson, your Brogdon, and your Middleton, the Clippers want, <laughs> I'm sure they would ask for all three, but they would at least want two of those mm. guys. You think that's too much. It sounds like you're I'm, fine with the Henson, of I, course, you know, but I'm, one of those other guys. I'm getting to the negotiation table, and I'm trying to give Henson plus a pick or Toledovich, ideally. Yeah, I mean, that sounds great. Sounds if great, you, sure. If you can do that, if you can do <laughs> if it for just Henson Gross. and a pick, that would be awesome. But uh, I think it does make the, the Bucks better. It doesn't get sure. them to a title. It makes them a possibly super expensive between, between Yanni if DeAndre ends up re-signing again next year, Bledsoe, Middleton, and yeah. whatever they do with Jabari Parker and restricted free agency. But that could also only be for another season. Bledsoe could leave after next year. Same with Middleton if he uh, declines his player option the following year. And then you have Yanni, maybe Jabari Parker, depending on how things go with mm. his rehab. And DeAndre Jordan, maybe that's a lure for free agents. You don't want to build too fast around Yanni. I think that could be a problem like we've seen with Anthony Davis. They've been trying to make the playoffs all these times and they're kind of in a tough spot right now so as long as they're patient as long as they can still see the future I think it's all right all right finally guys weird moment out of Dallas this weekend when Mavs center Nerlens Noel got caught grabbing a hot dog from the media room during halftime it became such a mini controversy that coach Carlisle well he decided to diffuse it with a little bit of hot dog humor here <laughs> I'm gonna go talk to uh, Wild about Harry's over on Knox. It's a hot dog place, and we're gonna see if they'll do a Nerlens, the Nerl, the Nerlens, which is a relish only, right? Yeah, relish only. Re relish or nothing at all. Yep. Okay. Did they have relish last night? I didn't see any, so I just got a bad. Just, just play, man. Right? Yeah. Very weird situation, but I'm curious. <laughs> Are you up or down on straight up plain hot dogs? Plain hot dogs. Uh, Tray up oh, right man. away. Majorly, majorly up on plain hot dogs. <laughs> <laughs> he just grabbed a pocket dog. Pocket dogger. <laughs> Great thing about a plain pocket dog, <laughs> nothing to get in the way of those pure beef scraps. Isn't it I mean, dry though? Yeah. I mean, it's not that dry. Oh. What are you doing? Oh, wow. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> pocket dog for my friends. <laughs> you want one? No, thanks. Oh, I mean, I will I'm say. Hungry. I will say if you're going to put you a hot dog in a pocket, how big are your pockets? Then don't have ketchup or mustard <laughs> on it. Yeah, but, but, oh, my God. God. Four pockets, four pocket dogs. Hey, cheers, uh, guys. Four pocket dogs, man. Pocket dogs. Pocket dogs. <laughs> thanks, friends. Because I got hot dogs we gotta take in a break. my pockets. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, these are great. This reminds this me of a, a good hot dog. This reminds me of a party I went to <laughs> right? once in high school, <laughs> and Ty Lu's mom. Um, 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 this guy um. won't even eat a pretend hot dog. You won't have a bite of a hot dog. Okay, ready? Eat that hot dog. Uh, have three. a bite. bite. Eat that dog. <laughs> oh, Lee, you should yeah. definitely eat that hot dog because you got a pick and payoff coming up on Wednesday. Mm, yeah. Trust me, eat all four of these dogs. All right. Mm, mm, uh, he's not even gonna swallow it. Mm. When we come back, he's gonna spit it out. Yeah, he's spitting it out. <laughs> you are crazy, man. I don't like that dog. You didn't even bite the dog. You didn't bite the dog. You're the weirdest guy. I don't think I'm pitching. The Starters is brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Honey, official partner of the NBA. He wouldn't do it. Look at this is Lee. Immediately as we go to commercial, taking out the dog. Didn't even bite the dog. Refusing to bite the dog. No. Come on, there was nothing wrong with that. That's it was a in nice my pocket or what? It's a nice pocket dog. I brings you a pocket dog, you just bite it and you don't even chew it. I just don't dig on dogs, man. <laughs> it's more of a cat guy. All right, let's get on. Oh, 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 what is going on here? This is a Monday. It's got a real Friday vibe. Rocket right? dog. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Take a bite. Let's chew that I'll dog. Save I'll save it for later. Yeah, okay. Let's get, to some, uh, let's get to some like weekend whoopsies here. Looking back at the NBA. It's been weekend. in the trash, I should point yeah, out. The inbound count was nearing five, so Nick Batum. Oh. Went to, uh, oh, right, the dog. Right, the dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Magic got their troll game on Friday night, throwing out the bandwagon fan cam to mock some Warriors fans in attendance. The, the lower third is great there, the graphic at the bottom, <laughs> making fun of each one in particular. Great stuff. Always a, always a classic. Ohio State played Wisconsin Saturday. LeBron really got into it while Wade was being interviewed. Never get too high, never get too low. And uh, oh some of them preach and some of them. Go, Dobbins! Go! Ah! Thanks, Rick. Oh, 
a little more from LeBron James, scoring against the Grizzlies. He's pumped, gonna give us a little dance, a little shimmy there, a little shoulder move. And this guy just wants a high five. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got really he wants a high five. Away from Come on, too. man. Nope, 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 nope. <laughs> See you later, buddy. <laughs> Anthony Tolliver helping out the Mop Boys in Philly, really getting into it. I mean, really doing his work. And JJ Reddick says, hey, over there. Anthony Tolliver's like, okay, we got that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, guys. Here we go. They're not even re-cleaning the areas he cleaned. Like, he's good. Yeah. Uh, same uh, game there, Detroit, Philly, Andre Drummond, Joel Embiid. They went at it. They were trading trash talk and buckets, and Embiid sort of got the last laugh because he drew AD <laughs> into his sixth foul, and he told them, you're out of here, hit the showers. This is my favorite part. Gets the crowd to wave goodbye to him. Lil Uzi Vert had a drink brought to him. And then he had some straw problems with it. <laughs> oh no! You, oh. you see, they left the wrapper on top. Ah, it's a nice right. move. Yeah, yeah. Oh. it's a really mm. nice courteous move. So there's nothing in his drink, but except a straw wrapper. Uh, the Phoenix Suns, they're bad, but oh, boy. you should never look this bad during Saturday Sun Celtics game. They just straight up refused to move? grab the uh. ball, play defense, <laughs> hustle. It was <laughs> mock. Oh, I guess this is a live. Oh, yeah, that was all one play there. That is wild. Jamal Murray dribbling out the clock here. Might rub it in Lonzo whoa, Ball's face a little bit. Big baller move. Whoa, 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 yeah. Oh. Spicy. And then a foul for no reason. Yeah, we took it to you, so uh, oh. rub it in I the face this. a little bit. I love this. like, get him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get him. Don't Six. let him do that to us. Rondo, keep an eye on him at the free throw line. He's going to try and steal this high five between the Bosnian Beasts and Napier there. Oh, that's a Just jumps in there. Big guy to get that's in front of. Yeah, like <laughs> Nurk does not like it. Get out of here, Rano. And other high five news. We had this just fun exchange between Bell and Durant. Oh, what is that? A little knee tap and wrist tap. Mm. Nailed it. Spurs' Joffrey Laverne dislocated his finger on Sunday. Mm. Now, now, he didn't wince one bit. But this man did. I've never seen Greg Popovich oh. wince before oh. until oh. that ah. moment. <laughs> now Laverne got it fixed up, but uh, people were watching it. We're enjoying <laughs> it. Look at that finger. Oh, no. Oh. Uh, the Rockets broadcast duo of Matt Bullard and Craig Ackerman. They're on the air, and they're getting a little blocked here by some Rockets players. Mm -hmm. Aaron Gordon there, tell them to turn around, wave to the camera. There was more. There was more. <laughs> In comes James Harden. He's getting ready. Start of the second <laughs> half. I mean, that's what you do. All right. Okay. Now, James, you're in our way. What are you doing up Yeah, there's the camera. Hello. <laughs> Amazing stuff. NBA always delivering on the weekend with the weekend whoopsies. When we come back, we got some wedgies. And Lee's going to It came down to a Friday night tiebreaker. Pistons, Wizards, Tass. Had Washington, Taz gets the W, Lee gets the loss. So Lee will be paying off Wednesdays, on Wednesday's show, mm -hmm. November's Pick'em Loss. Right. It is the Make Weight Challenge, Lee. What, you're uh, gonna make me put on weight? You should have <laughs> ate that hot dog is all I'm saying. Ah, uh, well. You should have you had all four of those hot dogs. Always eat the pocket dog. So again, that's on Wednesday. All right, let's start it all over. Zeros across the board here for December. Nets Hawks tonight. Ka -ka. Trey Lee and myself have Atlanta at home, Tess likes the Nets in a revenge game they just played. Tonight, it's part three of the Three Point Revolution presented by JBL, so make sure you catch that coming up on game time. And then following that, we got the Bucks and Celtics. Feel like these teams just keep playing. Yeah, no doubt. The round three for these squads uh, going tonight again here on the network, so enjoy that. Tomorrow, it's players only, baby. Players only, baby. Uh, we got Suns Raptors followed by Wizards Blazers. And you see there at the bottom of your screen, we got a little uh, G League action tomorrow morning. Rio Grande versus the Raptors, 9.05 at 11 a.m. Eastern. So you can catch that. All right, Lili. Yeah. VSP, man. Uh, we're going to the Garden yesterday in New York for a beautiful play here from the Knicks. Ball fizzes around. Ends up with Courtney Lee for three. It's beautiful stuff. No Porzingis. Didn't really matter. Doesn't matter. No. Very you don't nice. have to be a star to be in the VSP. No, you have to move no. that ball around like the Knicks did. That's what I call a very solid play. Also on Sunday, some fantastic news. We had not one, but two wedgies. Whoa. <laughs> in back-to-back -back games Sunday on NBA TV, we had two guards going at it hard. Ooh, the putback wedgie. Yeah, yeah, Russell Westbrook shoving nice. it in there, and then Jordan Clarkson doing the same for the Lakers. Two point guards making these wedgies happen. 
Yep. Nice. Wow. You see how every Reggie is a snowflake, but these two are pretty similar. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very similar. 100% true. We got to nine on the season, still projected only at 35, but we needed those very, very badly. Yeah, Wedgies come in bunches. Yeah, that was like two within about two hours. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. We all know. Okay, tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern. Join us live on Twitter for the Starters Twitter Show. Get your questions in right now. Hashtag the Starters at the Starters. That's it for us tonight. So much hot dog fun, but we'll be back tomorrow night at 6.30 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you then. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. And remember, all for dogs <laughs> and dogs for all. <laughs> A salute. Embrace the night, people.